Good morning. Um, today is Sunday, Sunday the 17th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a particular people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 9. The saints of God are called to be cho a chosen generation, a, pa a particular people. In addition to acknowledging that we are a purchased people and thus that we are not our own, we are also called upon to stand apart from. The world and from worldliness we are particular in that we are different our standards our taste our and our lifestyle because we have left the darkness of the world and come into the marvelous light of the gospel of jesus christ we cannot afford to compromise our commitment or dilute our discipleship our heart is in zion our place with the people of god Okay, so today is Revelation chapter 14, um, and it was a little bit less doom and gloom than yesterday, um, so that was good. Um, let's see, the Lamb will stand upon Mount Zion, the gospel will be restored in the last days by angelic ministry, the Son of Man will harvest the earth. So yesterday we talked about sorry my hair is anyways yesterday we talked about like the doom and gloom and the war in heaven and and satan and his minions having you know a temporary victory over you know the children of men um so we had that conversation yesterday and now thank goodness here comes the savior to rescue us all hallelujah literally like you read 13 and you're just like, oh, and then you read 14 and you're like, oh, goodness. Okay. Thank goodness. Um, so the verse I chose for my personal statement is verse seven saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And for me, I just wrote worship God, give him glory. Um, those of you following along for the past few weeks know that I'm trying to, um, deepen my prayers, grow closer to Christ, grow closer to my heavenly father, um, and, and the way that I'm trying to do that is a couple of challenges. We're doing the Book of Mormon challenge next year. I'm also doing a um, general conference prep challenge for myself. Um, and, um, I'm also trying to make a prayer book of Mormon. I'm going to make a separate video after I'm done with this one about all that. But, um, I watched a YouTube video. This woman was making, I think it was a prayer Bible possibly, or just setting up her own um, Bible journal. And she said a prayer before she started. And I was so uncomfortable during that prayer. I, I don't know what it is. It, I pray how you want to pray, but I want my prayers to not be like that. I don't know. It was just, it was all, it, I was just uncomfortable during that prayer. And I don't ever want to have that reflected in my prayers. Like, I'm sure he doesn't, Heavenly Father, mind if somebody's praying to him, he's like, yes, pray to me. I don't care how you do it, just do it. Pray to me, connect to me. I don't ever want him to feel uncomfortable when I do my prayers. You know, or like, he's like, I can't think of anything else to say, hey, like, also the camera angle might be a little bit weird. It's a little high. I've rearranged not only my desk, you can see I put a tablecloth down, but also my entire room. And look, you don't jiggle when I jiggle the table. 
because I put a bookshelf on the other end to stop that and the camera's on that, but now the camera's also farther away. So I gotta fix the camera angle. I'm digressing. I don't know what I'm at today. It's my second day off and I'm loving it completely, but I'm still waking up at like five or six o'clock in the morning. I don't like that bit. Let's just get into the verse by verse and then we can talk about other stuff. I know that's what you're here for. Okay. For verse one, the lamb, the savior will yet stand on Mount Zion, uh, in what we now call independence, Missouri, having with him the 144,000 representatives of the tribes of Israel. For verse, verses two through three, the lyrics of the new song are written in Doctrine and Covenants 84 verses 98 through 102. That might be interesting. Hold up. I moved all my books right there next to me, so. I can just grab them real quick. D and C, 84. Come on. D and C, 84, 98 through 102. Until all shall know me who remain, even from the least unto the greatest, and shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, and shall see eye to eye, and shall lift up their voice, and with the voice together sing this new song, saying, The Lord hath brought again Zion, the Lord hath redeemed his people Israel, according to the election of grace which was brought to pass by the faith and covenant of their fathers. The Lord hath redeemed his people, and Satan is bound, and time is no longer. The Lord hath gathered all things in one. The Lord hath brought down Zion above. The Lord hath brought up Zion from beneath. The earth hath travailed and brought forth her strength. The truth is established in her bowels, and the heavens have smiled upon her. She, hath, she is clothed with the glory of her God, for her... He stands in the midst of his people. Glory and honor and power and might be ascribed to our God, for he is full of mercy, justice, grace, and truth, and peace forever and ever. Amen. That seems like a prayer that needs to go into the prayer Bible, prayer Book of Mormon, prayer Doctrine and Covenants. That was nice. I liked that. Okay. Okay. Um, for verse six, we have traditionally identified the angel flying through the midst of heaven as Moroni, even though other scriptures clearly suggest a number of angels or messengers. Therefore, this is a composite angel involved in the restoration of all things. Um, for verse seven, a commandment is given to praise, respect, and worship the God of heaven and earth. For verse 8, the fall of Babylon is announced. The wine of the wrath of her fornication, Hebrew and Greek text, indicate that Babylon, or the great and abominable church of the devil, uh, has caused all nations to drink of the poisonous wine of her fornication. 9 through 11, those who worshipped the beast will suffer and will have no rest. They will not be able to enter into God's glory. 12 through 13, those who did not worship the beast will be blessed. Uh, 14 through 20, this event seems to be the same one seen by Daniel in 7 verses 13 through 14. The resurrected Savior comes with a crown of glory and power and with the sickle of judgment, the world is then harvested. Verses 17 through 18, another angel is a destroying angel who is also thrusting in his sickle the image of the wine press being trodden is reminiscent of Isaiah's similar vision. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have any more or anything else to say about that. I don't. Um, all right. Do I want to say anything else? No. 
I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 17th, and we've got two. These are for children and parents. One is from the BBC, and one is from Leslie Weatherhead. O Lord Jesus Christ, be near to all young children, that in the peril and confusion of this time their growing spirits may take no hurt at our hands, and grant to parents such sure knowledge of thy love that they may guide their children with courage and with faith. Lord Jesus, who didst love little children and who taught us that of such is the kingdom of heaven, show us new ways of protecting them and a new determination to care for the children of all nations that grow up to know and love thee. They may make the world more like thy plan for it, so, many, so may thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. That was Revelation chapter 14. And next week we're doing Learn of Me. Learn of Me. Oh, well, quite a bit. Okay. So tomorrow, I wasn't clearly not thinking when I did this, but tomorrow we do Learn of Me chapters 51 and 52. Let me grab that real quick. So we're doing two, 51 and 52, which is Temptation of Jesus Christ and Trials of Jesus Christ. Okay, so they're short. That's probably why I did it. Okay, then on Tuesday we do 53, which is types of in anticipation of Jesus, in anticipation types of Jesus Christ. All these things can be found in, this is um, just the topical guide of Jesus Christ. Somebody made a notebook of it. If you're just joining us now, what we're studying, just going to give you a brief overview real quick. And then Wednesday, we do 54 in memory types of Jesus Christ and 55 so we are we are finishing it out this week uh bread of life 55 is bread of life 56 is thursday which is cornerstone and then friday is 57 creator god and then saturday is 58 godhead and then sunday is 59 God the Father, Jehovah. And then, and then we're done with, with this, with the learn of me. Okay. All right. So tomorrow we do temptations of Jesus Christ and trials of Jesus Christ. So, um, if you need that, I should probably list that in the description box below. Anyways, all right. That is all for today. Happy Sunday. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye.